Wiley Yoga Social. I'm Lisa. And I'm Missy. And we're in Lake Wiley, South Carolina. <laughs> and we are doing a really, really awesome special um, yoga series today that we're starting. And this one is called Tripod Yoga. And we actually made up the name. <laughs> Yay! It is for um, yoga with the use of one arm, whether it's from an injury or um, life different things happening with you, um, right. but it's for people who have the use of just one arm, whether it's injury or life. Yeah, you don't have an arm, whatever <laughs> it is. Whatever um, whatever kind of upper body limitation yes. you might have. We're, I actually, gonna... yeah, broke my arm, fell down a flight of stairs a few years ago, and could not use my right arm for about nine months. And I know I had a really tough time and wished that there had been something like this for me. Right. And I've got a childhood friend who um, has lost the use of one of her arms. And so we thought that this would be a great tool to yeah. use for anyone that has those limitations. Or maybe just wrist anything, whether it's right. entire arm. Like I couldn't use from like my, I actually couldn't use my whole arm at that point. But whatever part that is, um, whether it's the right or left, this can apply and we want to make sure especially um, we're not going to cover everything and we're not really going to flow through a whole series Missy and I though before we start we took the time to try to do a Sun A and a Sun B with our without the use of one of our arms right and we didn't film that <laughs> <laughs> and believe me it was not easy it's tough and with doing that um, and we are not physical therapists no, so we are not. We're, and any, anything that we give a suggestion for is just honestly coming from myself as a yoga instructor and then from ourselves as trial and error and trying to do it. Right. And what we feel would be the best thing that could help you. So we're going to start right now um, with how what we think would be the best use of for you if you were to take a yoga class um, at home or in trying to go to a yoga class once they reopen um, and how this could help you best. So we'll just start basically in a child's pose. I think it's right. pretty easy. That makes a lot of common sense, but most classes start in a child's pose. So we added some pillows around us, things that you could have in your home that you would have access to you um, at any time. Um, so I also added for myself, I have an extra yoga mat. For me, as I found, as me and Missy were moving through this without the use of my arm, I found that I had a lot of tenderness in my knees. And so I'm adding this rolled up yoga mat right here, which you could use, um, I feel like a pillow, but I'm gonna use this extra yoga mat under my knees because I found as we move through here, we're gonna do a lot of things that require the use of your knees on the mat. And mine were very sensitive. So I'm gonna use this extra yoga mat here under my knees which I would suggest possibly if you find you have sensitivity under your knees. Yes, to or do. If, if you don't have an extra yoga mat and your pillows might be too unstable, you can always take your own yoga yes. mat fold and it. make a fold in it for your knees to go. That on. works really great too. Um, or even a towel. Yes, just a towel, mm -hmm. a basic towel or sheet. Yes, anything that you can roll up and create kind of like the length of your mat would work really well because you know, we're going to be spacing our knees out hip width distance apart a lot of times. Right. That works really good. Or two pillows. Anything works really good. Right. So obviously, um, not obviously, but you know, a child's pose mm -hmm. isn't really too challenging of a posture, but it can be um, for anyone. So first going down in that, we uh, bring the knees out wide, sink back on your heels. And for some, if this is challenging, again, you can always mm -hmm. place a pillow right under your sit bones here to sit down upon. And then really first just starting with placing the forehead down onto the mat and then crawling either one of your hands forward and just allowing your forehead to rest gently on the mat here. And then we're gonna demonstrating as much as we can with just one arm here. And then from here, a lot of times when we're not kind of moving in a flowing um, way, we're just going to kind of move from posture to posture. Generally, from this position, the next pose most classes would move into would be a tabletop position. And this is going to be the most important that we're going to use throughout all of this. It's going to be a great way of transition throughout all the poses. 
And that's what we're focusing on a lot, Missy, is transitions, right? Because we found as we were trying to do this that the transitions were the really the core part of most classes that can be the most challenging. So from here, to get into a tabletop position, what we're focusing a lot on is use of the forearm and the bicep. Um, allowing yourself to push into this forearm to help yourself rise up and then using that bicep muscle to help push yourself into that tabletop position. And again, focusing a lot on your core strength. Now it would be really easy to really open up through the shoulder here and open up through the chest, but allow yourself to try to think as much of a table as you can, just like you would um, as anyone would in this posture, but even more so to really focus to help you with all the other positions as we move in. So here, you know, you can go into a lot of other things, right? Right. You don't want to dump like this. Right. And you don't want to try to open up. Yeah. And I think that's great. So we're going to move on from there. Um, the next pose that we're going to move into is a really a big one in all yoga classes is downward facing dog. Now this is going to be challenging for any, it was challenging for anyone. Yes, yes. Really it's challenging for I'll, anyone. I'll stay straight. So the first thing we're going to do here is you want to tuck your toes under. And then again, if this is challenging, I'll move this way mm -hmm. so people can see my toes. Right. There's a few ways doing it. So of course we're going to go into it first, just lifting up the hips, pushing back right in here. Pressing a lot through the hand, letting the head hang heavy. Now, sometimes everyone's going to say different things for your feet, but you might find it easier to step the feet out wider. This might be a better place to give yourself a little bit more stability in this. Maybe you want to, at first to place your feet closer together. Maybe you need to push your toes different. Find a place. Don't worry about what maybe a teacher says. Um, or what is instructed. I would recommend keep your feet far apart. But finding the place that's better for you um, to find a more stable place here in your downward facing dog. So maybe it's wider. And again, try not to let the hips bump to one direction or the other. So as much as you can, try to keep that stable in the center. Pressing a lot, keeping the hips up, maybe even bending into the knees would help to help keep pressing the tailbone up towards the ceiling as much as possible. But again, if that feels awkward, come back to tabletop position. So that is always going to be, I think, the best go-to place at any time. So if you start to feel any pain in the shoulder or it's too much, always come back to tabletop position. So I think the next pose we're going to move through is really going to be um, what we found that stepping through the next yes. part. So this is, this is huge. Just you need to be able to move through, right? Um, but did you actually, before we step through, I think the next in a Sunday would actually be stepping back, right? right. Mm -hmm. Because it's really stepping up, stepping back. So after we were a downward facing dog, we would pretty easily be able to just walk up to the top of our mat, moving through a mountain pose, different things like that, coming to a forward fold. So if we're in a forward fold, the next place we would go would be a high plank. Now, Missy and I both felt like, wow, we had a lot of challenges here. So coming into a high plank, what we really found were a few different options. The first one was actually to step back and lower down to your knee. The first place, almost like a low lunge, and then to lower down to the other knee. Now this is, we're going to show a lot of different options. This is the first one. Then to come down to your forearm and then to do a forearm plank. And coming into a forearm plank would be a great way to start first into your plank pose. Coming back to your knee. Now let's do another option of that. So another option from here would be you're in your forward fold, planting your hand on the mat, building up to stepping back right into that plank. Now maybe stepping the feet out a little wider here. So step your feet out really wide. Push the booty down though, Missy. Mm -hmm. There you go. But see how when I step my feet out a lot wider? That helps. But now, the next thing would be to lower all the way down to the mat. 
right. That's Both tough. Missy and I were like, we're that's a tough. We're with, in a space plan. It's tough with no limitations. It's very challenging. So again, this is where I felt like forearm, bicep, because the shoulder being such a ball and socket joint that is very shallow, you need to be very careful as we build up strength in that area. So if, whether you're in a plank or forearm plank, from here, I would suggest as we start to come down first to the knees, then come down to that forearm. Again, if you're here in tabletop, if you want to extend one leg out long, then the other lowering down to your thighs, then belly. Now, if you want to take it a different way, you would come down first, high plank, forearm plank. <laughs> yeah, that sounded great, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that takes a lot, but it didn't actually hurt. No. It made a noise. It didn't, it didn't actually hurt me at all. But I would actually be more likely to jump to my knees, forearm, then my forearm plank, and then lower down. Because to me, it feels a little more graceful. But to be honest, it didn't hurt me. That's because I'm not strong. I mean, it would take me a long time to build that strength. Whoop. I'm yeah. gonna hurt myself. But no, but it, try it that way with first there, then come to your knees first, then come to your forearm, now form your plank, then lower yourself down. That felt a lot nicer, right? It's it's a lot nicer. It's still just as challenging. Right. That, but it's it's still challenging, but you still felt it. So right. here, next we come into like our cobra. So you would still peel off with your back. You can pull back through your elbow, mm -hmm. then lowering down. And this is where we kind of do the same thing. Push up through your forearm first. Now I have that, <laughs> that underneath my yeah. knees here. From here, using that bicep, first coming to tabletop position and then pushing up right here and then to your downward facing dog. So again, really focusing a lot, forearm, bicep, then pushing through the chest and shoulder to your downward facing dog until you build up more strength. Now there's a pose called dolphin pose, which is a little bit more of a fluid motion. Right. Um, but that, it takes a little while to build up to that kind of push up right from there. Yes. But as a way, it was more of a, here, 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 I think that works really well. It does. It, it creates it creates a smoother transition. Yeah. So that you're not gonna set yourself up for injury. Well, or, you know, I mean, it's one thing when you're at home, but just right. now I made that thud, right? Right. I mean, nobody, we all, I mean, I don't know how many times I have gone into like a headstand and went boom, and everyone looked at me, and it's fine. But not everyone's cool with that, right? <laughs> I don't mind, but I get it. If you don't want that, these are ways to help you feel comfortable um, being in a group setting and being okay with that. Because that's what, I mean, if that's the truth, right. we can say over and over again, it's okay, it's okay, don't worry. But people still worry. Right. That's the truth. We all still worry about what we look like and stuff, no matter how much we say don't. And it's important that you get to enjoy and go to the yoga class or be comfortable with it. And we want to make sure that you have that, the tools to help you. Um, so the next thing we're going to do though, is to actually move forward and step through. Yes. This was one that I couldn't believe how hard it was to do. Um, I didn't realize how hard it would be. Right. Because when we were in downward facing dog, now lifting up my right leg wasn't so hard, but the left was. So what Missy and I figured out was actually coming down first to tabletop position. At that point, lifting our right leg, which is just as challenging, then stepping it through to the top of our mat. Tuck the back toe under, coming up here to warrior two. Reposition your toes at this point. So you have your front heel, Missy, because you want to bring that front heel to dissect with your back foot arch. So it's no problem to step it through and reposition your toes a little bit here. Um, which, honestly, if I was even going like this, I, a lot of people right in here have to stop <laughs> right. and have to come up and reposition their foot. That is not easy to send the foot forward all the way through, no matter what you have going on. Right. So from here, we're gonna do that again on the other side. So same arm with the left leg, 
we're down here. Let's go from downward facing dog. We're going to come down first to our knees. Then we're going to lift the left leg challenging still. Woo! Except I'm on this yes. cushion, which I think is a little more challenging. I think I might unroll it just a little bit. I didn't realize how high up my thing was here. Whoop, lift it up. And then we step it through. Now again, tuck the back toe under first. Turn the back heel down. Then we rise up. And again, this is our first time doing some of these. It takes a little practice. It does. But it would be better, again, trying to do this as I'm going to show. I tried to lift my left leg up. And... First of all, it won't, <laughs> but when it did finally, I was going to fall over. I was, I'm like, it wasn't happening. <laughs> so I thought, okay. Um, and the going in a tabletop was something actually I have had many students do who have had um, other injuries related to sports, who have had, um, whether it be knee, hip, other challenges, mm -hmm. um, who have trouble um, maneuvering ways and finding ways to step through right it is something i have used many times for other purposes so that is one again making tabletop position your best friend to me is going to be the key here um again so even lifting up and it doesn't matter if you're stepping outside of the foot of the hand don't worry where you're stepping it through and maybe you don't even want to lift the leg you up. don't even have to lift it this high no no you can just it's just getting that little bit of lift, just a little bit of lift through the glutes. So lifting up is a matter high, just lifting up enough so you can clear out and then stepping up through. It's just really trying to get that opening through the hips and the glutes. That's why we lift up the leg a little bit, just to get that opening and a good feeling there. Right. And Missy had another good question. She was like, what about all the core work we do yes. in plank position? Right. And I said, well, honestly, there's nothing you can't do on your back. When we do core work in a plank position, usually I see people doing this anyways. <laughs> I'll be honest. If you do core on your back and you actually press your lower back into the mat a lot, as you really should, and you do good form, there is nothing you can't do on your back. Just like when you have pigeon, right? So many people come into supine half pigeon and get a better glute stretch that way than in soup, uh, than regular half pigeon. Mm -hmm. um, so really, if there's anything that is done in a plank, that can't be done reverse, and right. maybe even more effectively, right? If you really press, pull up and in. So I I think um, if we didn't touch on, you know, a pose or something they're not thinking of, I I'd, I'd love for someone to tell us or add some suggestions yes or if what we're saying made no sense <laughs> that would be great because right. we personally try to put our own bodies through this yes um we're not just like making it up so we're trying to think of what could i possibly do um to make it work and that's what we want to do and bring for you so we want to keep on doing that so maybe um the next one will be having no head no <laughs> The headless yoga. Some days I feel like I don't have a head. Oh, many times. I know. Whew. But absolutely. So let us know um, what else we can add to this. Or if you have some suggestions, really let us know if you try this out and if it helps you. That would really, um, that would be the best. I think know? so. That would be, right. oh my God, that would mean so much to us. Any, any feedback you have for us, we need feedback. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. We love you. Love you. Namaste. Namaste.